During our sermon today, some of you might have seen uh, in a weekly email that we send out that uh, we're asking for you to be a participant and bring a dollar bill or two. Now, the whole thing about this is as you, uh, and you'll learn about this as the sermon goes, as you share the dollar, just know that anything might happen to that dollar. Can you be okay with that? You can be okay with that? Yeah. All right, good, good. So, uh, <laughs> Bill says, I'll give you two. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, those of you who would like to participate in, in that way, um, you're very, uh, very welcome to. If not, that's okay too. The message will still come across. Well, we gather our hearts together in this time of worship, and we pause on this day. We remember that we belong to God. All of the gifts that we have have been part of God's generosity toward us. So thank you for your presence here. Those of you who are visiting today, we are so grateful to have you with us as well. And we hope that you come back often and that we can really uh, grow a relationship with you. Uh, The connection cards are also in the pews, and we encourage you to fill those out as as you see fit, and we'd love to um, reach out to you as well. So let us prepare for worship, and uh, we will begin in just a moment here with our time of confession and forgiveness. As God's people today, we also gather um, with with certainly some concerns throughout our country and uh, been listening to news headlines about fires, Northern California, where there is considerable anxiety and, um, and also loss, including loss of life. And so we, we join as people of prayer as well for those who are victimized by fire, also in the Chelan area. And so we see visible signs of fires nearby. Now we turn to God's promises of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, You have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word, a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
we read this psalm responsively. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways, and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. A reading from Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew, he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. So now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they all sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet Come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, 
And immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. In our theology, we say God is creator. God is creator. Now, God didn't just have an arts and crafts project, create the world, and then move on to something else. God continues to create. There's this sense of generosity, of abundance, of giving that God is always involved in. Okay? And so even when we come to worship, we come receiving, receiving from God, receiving God's Spirit through the Word, through the meal, through the gift of one another. We come receiving mercy and forgiveness. We come receiving belonging, a proclamation that you are a child of God. And and so we just become inundated with the generosity of God, even in worship. And this is important to mention as we head into um, this fall, we'll head into a year where we really get deeper into worship as a theme to say, what is God calling us to do and think and be in this thing that we call worship? Generosity of God. This sermon is about generosity. Many of us know this gospel reading so well that I just read, the feeding of the 5,000, that you could honestly finish my sandwiches? No, (laughs) sentences. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And, and, oh, it's just such a a beloved story. Um, Those of us who are adults, we, I think, are often guilty of looking on the adult level, eyeball to eyeball, and sometimes we don't notice those who are just a little bit below us. And so Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, there's this boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for all these people? Thank God for Andrew for noticing somebody below his line of sight. Do we sometimes overlook the younger people among us? We sometimes do, yeah. And so here's this boy. Oh, who knows how how old he is? I don't know. Somehow, the boy is willing to give up his lunch. When I was his age, I was quite protective of my lunch. This boy was willing to offer up his lunch. Did the boy have any idea what was going to happen? I don't think so. Was it an act of faith? Perhaps. The children among us have a wonderful, natural, innate trust. Trust in the adults around them. And so the boy offers it up. I've got something to share. And so the boy is exampling for us, right? He's modeling for us um, something of this idea, this concept of generosity. I have a helper today. Phil, thank you for being my helper. And we're going to have an activity now. Go ahead. Um, Those of you who brought dollar bills, all right, I hear some shuffling. I've got a couple of dollar bills, too. Full disclosure, I came to church today accidentally with my wallet empty, and my good and faithful intern Um, handed these two dollars to me just as we sat down at worship. (laughs) Oh my goodness. 
and yet you're still willing to hear a sermon from your pastor. Okay. <laughs> so here's how this activity will happen. Um, I will uh, speak about an example of how we can give for God's work, whether it's through the work of the congregation or um, God's work out in the community somewhere. And these dollar bills might actually symbolize a financial contribution, but they might also symbolize, oh, the gift of time, the gift of prayer or attention, okay? But now, every time, every time I uh, give a dollar or two or more to you, the congregation, I want to be able to keep the mission going, and so... I would be relying on you to help to replenish the basket. So the way I imagine it happening is, let's say I give a dollar bill to Zoe, then a couple of people around her could offer their dollar bills up to the basket. Okay? Here we go. I'd like to set aside some of my own time and money for the mobile food bank the mobile food bank who comes to our community, oh, four times a year. And um, we join our efforts together to um, make sure that those most needy in our community can have something to eat. I would like to um, donate $50 for a concrete stove for the needy in Nicaragua, Family and Friends United. And... Um, that is a stove that they can, these families can use so that they can cook food more safely, so that they don't have to deal with the fumes that come up with, um, with open flames. Right? I would like to, um, let's see, I'd like to help our youth and family ministry be able to provide hospitality, perhaps snacks or um, some resources, supplies, so that when they have their gatherings for their third through fifth grade youth group um, or their middle school or high school, that they can have a wonderful time together. Now, how much did we start out with, Phil? I think one. One? <laughs> I'd like to, um, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, there is somebody, a family who is connected with our church who has a child who has a genetic disorder. It's called Kleefstra, Kleefstra syndrome. And it's a rare disorder. And um, it really impacts this child's life and absolutely the life of the family. There is genetic research going on to see what can be done medically um, through that technology to... Um, to eradicate the situation or to heal or to make life better. So I want to make sure that I'm helping with the research. I want to set aside a few hours each week um, as a classroom helper or maybe watch over recess at one of our elementary schools. Washington School, oh, sorry, I almost hit you. <laughs> Washington School is right across the street. And during the school year at 3.05, or whatever time it is, 3.05, um, every single school day, our parking lot is jam-packed with parents who are picking up their kids. Do we have a relationship with Washington? Yes, by virtue of our parking lot. I want to spend time in classrooms because I think that when children have a positive adult relationship with someone other than their parent or their teacher, that over time they will remember those positive relationships and perhaps not become an angry older youth, right? We know about school shootings in our country, and it is a tragedy. What are some of the ways that we can involve ourselves in relationship? So I want to give some of my time. These dollar bills represent time. Erling, I'm going to give you some time today. There you go. 
I want to, um, I want to, I want to donate three dollars. Uh, I want to give three dollars to Grace Lutheran Church so that they can buy one piece of choral music so that our music ministries can continue on. Okay, one piece of music, three dollars. Approximately forty people in our choir. Okay. I want, to, um, I want to start spending Thursday evenings. Hey, give me a couple of dollars here. <laughs> I, want to spend, I want to spend Thursday evenings at Celebration Lutheran Church because they have committed to providing space for citizenship classes for those who want to become citizens here in this country. And so I want to practice interviewing with, with these um, oftentimes Latino people, so that they can become comfortable speaking to a Caucasian person. There will come a time where they're going to be sitting right in front of a white person who's going to be making a decision about their desire to become American citizens. Monty really wants to give something over, doesn't he? All right. What? There's a $5 bill in here. You guys are breaking the rules. <laughs> I want to make sure that Grace Lutheran Church has a solid insurance policy. Oh, isn't that just so exciting? <laughs> but if we don't have an insurance policy, what? You know, we become more at risk. Uh, let's see, what else? Um... I am grateful that the front door of our church has an ADA compliant button and the door can now open. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I know that that expense has already um, happened, but I want, I, want to, I want to give a gift to help recoup those expenses. By the way, it was an $8,000 door. Okay. I'm happy that our downstairs space has, Nancy, here you go. I'm happy that our downstairs space has um, now been used by a local preschool, King's Garden Preschool. And I know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, oh, what? Oh, you can't hear me very well. Okay, I know that the preschool uses our space downstairs four or five days a week, and I know that they need to turn lights on, right? And I know that each day after they are here, our janitor, our custodian spends at least a little bit of time to make sure that it's all kept well and clean, so there are some expenses. Hi, Bennett, you wanna come and help a little bit? All right. I want to dedicate time to pray for God's work in our neighborhood. Okay? And when you see someone dedicating time, then you might want to join with them. You see how generosity goes? You see one act of generosity and you're inspired to also help out a little bit, right? Yeah, you are. We like to join up with one another. We are social people. We like to see... God's work active in our world. Advocate for people who feel pushed aside or disregarded. Sometimes that actually takes financial resources, but absolutely it takes our heart and our attention and our voice. Help cook food on Wednesdays for our community meal that starts in the fall. Um, Make sure that our van can have gas because over the last three weeks, our van has been used as a school bus bringing, picking up kids to go to Celebration Lutheran for a day camp. And Milt was our friendly bus driver. Now, all of that stuff takes resource, doesn't it? <laughs> Financial resources. Pardon? Absolutely. 
our quilt ministry, we can come up with so many examples of how generosity is um, multiplied, especially when our relationships connect with one another and we say, oh, I want to be part of that too. So this little boy's example in the feeding of the 5,000 is something that um, really created a sense of inspiration, certainly for me, as one who looks at this story. And um, I, I grew up seeing this miracle as being Jesus, out of his divine power, he just created all kinds of bread out of the air like this. Another way to interpret it, that, interpret that story, um, not that they are in conflict with one another, but I think that another way to see this is to say that the generosity of the boy helped to inspire generosity for those who were gathered. And they might have had a little food to share. Jesus had a lot of love and divine, um, divine generosity to share. But could it be that this became a miracle for the community to understand the gift of generosity from one neighbor to the other? Mm -hmm. As a congregation, we have our own version of that as we continue on. Well, Phil, you really come away pretty good now. What's this? We got lots. Have we got more? Sure, okay. We got tons more. Okay. Those of you, oh, we, we need yeah, that we back. Way in the back. Let's, let's, go and, let's go and gather up, up here. Does anyone else have an example of ways that our generosity spreads? Thank you. Go ahead, Phil. <clears throat> I want to help our social concerns team to be able to cover education expense for girls in Tanzania. What is it? Maybe 10 girls have been educated this last year because of gifts from our congregation in Tanzania. Wouldn't it be wonderful to meet them someday? That would be a stretch. But it's not necessary because we're giving those gifts because we have gotten a sense of generosity from God. From our psalm this morning, there is this phrase that often finds its way into table prayers. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. So, Phil, what would you like to do with these dollars? I mean, goodness sakes, you could have quite a nice lunch with your family. <laughs> we could. Maybe go to Vegas or someplace. Okay. No. But, you know, I think, I think the food bank would be a good place for it. The food bank? All right. Can we come up with a prayer for our generosity today? Lord God, teach us what it means to give, to give of ourselves for the sake of your mission, your work in this world. You are a God of such abundance. What we give back to you and to the world is only a small sign of your incredible generosity. Teach us what this means for our congregation's life together, for our participation in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Loving God, we pray for all those who gather to celebrate the holy feast of Christ's body and blood. Strengthen every member of your church in love, faith, and service. Almighty God, we praise you for the beauty and abundance of your creation. Send sunshine and rain to nourish crops.
teach us to produce and distribute the food that nourishes our bodies and the bread of life that feeds us with justice and generosity. Loving God, you know every nation, every culture, and every people. Teach us to work together for peace and to love each other even when we cannot understand our neighbors. Almighty God, you hear the cries of the hungry, the sick, and the downcast. Send food, healing, and comfort to all who are in need. Satisfy the desire of every, every living thing. Loving God, we thank and praise you for this congregation. Teach us to be a holy family, Christ's body to you and for one another. Unite us in love and faith. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our Almighty God, we thank and praise you for the beloved dead who taught and fed us in Christian faith. Hasten the feast that will reunite us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Show us a way, show us a way. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, show The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the same. Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right for our and it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Uh, just a reminder that this coming week will be very busy here. Um, we have Vacation Bible School Day Camp starting. Um, and tonight at 6 o'clock, if you are helping in any way with Vacation Bible School, please come at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the team that's going to be here. And um, Rich is all excited. <laughs> and... Um, and we'll be meeting with them, learning some songs and some games, and we need a lot of help. We've, we've had, we went from last week where we only had 10 kids registered, and we probably have over 40 registered now. So um, if you have some free time next week and you would like to join us, we would love to see your face. So thank you very much. You're, you may not have children that are going to school but there are many children around the world who are going to be going to school. And if you have a, de a, a desire to purchase school supplies, this is an awesome time to do that. They are very inexpensive by our standards, um, but they can mean the difference between a child going to school and not. If you would like to contribute to that, or to, and we will send them to Lutheran World Relief, if you would like to contribute to that, I have several backpacks that are already made up that are um, looking for things to go in them. <laughs> um, but if you would like to know what we need, please just come see me. Give me your name, and I can get you the list of things. Um, it's, they're pretty specific of what they want. So it does, it's not just any old school supplies, but there's, they're pretty specific. Um, but right now, one of the things that back or the notebooks are on sale at Shopco. They're only 19 cents a piece. You can buy 18 of them for under five dollars. Um, those are probably one of the bigger expenses usually. Thank you. Apparently, we need snacks. Um, the list has been in the bulletin and the announcements, um, and we we need snacks is what I'm being told. So if you need to know specifically what kind of snacks we need, maybe check with Don. Okay, thank you. Memorial service for Wes Westby this coming Saturday, 2 p.m. here at Grace. Hope you can join us there. through 
Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks. Thanks.